bless you, we worship you, we exalt thee. We thank you so much for the privilege and merit you have given us, O oh God, to gather before you. We are come to learn at your feet. We are asking, O oh God, that you show us mercy for all you be teaching us, O oh God, that we are not doing with. Have mercy upon us, O oh God. Give us ear to hear the heart to do. Patience of days, empty me of myself, fill me of yourself, show me mercy, speak to me, and speak through me in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Father, I ask, O oh God, let your word that will be coming forth be your word indeed. Help me, O oh God, to speak your word as you desire it to be. And let every ear be open to hear you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because I know the devil has been defeated. Every spirit of distraction, my wandering, they are arrested, they cast to the abyss in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because I know you have taken over in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We just heard what the Bible readers read just now. Most of them are instructions. Which what we do and have a better life to live. It's a place that said it's only a fool that will sleep with somebody else's wife. We have a message this hour before me and you. I believe we all would like to have our ch children who are responsible. How can a child be responsible when? The father is saying A and he's saying B. No matter how a child is brilliant, no matter how a child is sharp, if that child is rebellion, I think the parents will be happy. Same thing with me and you. No matter how we are doing, zealous and all, if we are not obedient to God, there's problem. Therefore, we have a message titled The Believer's Unfailing Defense and Treasure. The Believer's Unfailing Defense and Treasure. What is this defense? Somebody might say, God is my defense. Good. You are right. But something make God to defend you. Ah, I have treasures in heaven because I am always in evangelism. Thank you. I tell you something, it is possible uh, for somebody to have treasure in heaven, by the end of the journey, he or she will not be there to enjoy it and that will not be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And for that not to be our portion, we must listen carefully and do what the Lord is saying. The believers on failing defense. This defense never fail. This treasure, if you have it, it will shine all true. If you have this defense in you, no matter what the enemy will do, no matter what the path of darkness we do, thank you, Lord Jesus, you can never fail. And this is the defense that the Holy Spirit John said to me now. This is the defense that our brother had, brother Job in the Bible. Maybe when I read there now, you understand the defense I'm talking about. This is the defense that Job had. That there's nothing the devil could do about him. Now, the Bible says in the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 1, there was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Verse 8, and the Lord said unto Satan, has thou not considered my servant Job that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, 
one that feareth God and eschew evil? Then Satan answered the Lord, said, I said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Has thou not made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side? Meaning, Satan have tried to break through, but he could not. Why would God make hedge around you? Why? Because he was a perfect man. Because he was a man that feared God. And a man that eschewed evil. And all these three components is centered on one thing. This unfairly defense. You cannot be perfect without having it. You cannot eschew evil without having it. If you say you fear God and you don't have what we are about to hear now, you don't have it. You are only an hypocrite. Then, what is that thing? That thing is called obedience. It's called obedience. The greatest treasure and defense one can ever have in life is the defense of obedience. The greatest weapon one we ever pray to have to defeat the devil is the weapon of obedience. The greatest grace a man we ever wish to have to assess God, to assess heaven, to walk with God is the grace of obedience. Now, as I said before, the greatest weapon a child of God will ever have to fight the enemy is the weapon of obedience. Any other weapon one would want to fight with is too heavy to carry by a disobedient child of God. If you want to carry the name of Christ to fight the enemy, it will be too heavy for you if you are a rebellious child of God. No matter what you try to use to fight the devil, if you are not obedient to God, it will be a, an extraordinary heavy weapon. You cannot carry it. What makes weapons light for you is obeying the word of God. The Bible told me and you in the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. Then from verse 1, from, from 3 to 6. See, and see, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 to 6. Try to take it gently, gently, so that it can enter our spiritual medulla of the data. But I beseech you. So, sorry. Okay. Chapter 10, 3 to 6. Say, for though we walk in the flesh, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For, for the weapon of our welfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. Mighty through God for the pulling down of stronghold. No matter how strong the hold may be, the gal the, the galaxy may be, is going to be pulled down. Why? Because of the weapons you are using. Verse 4. Verse 5, rather. Cast it down. Imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Every high thing that disobeyed God and exalted itself above the knowledge of God. Now, above the knowledge of God, and bringing it into bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, verses, and having in readiness, having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, having in readiness. To fight for you, to defend you, to do everything to secure your life. When 
your obedience is fulfilled. God is ready to fight for you. Everyone tried to humiliate you. Everyone tried to ask, where is your God? God is ready to fight them, but not with disobedience in you. What makes you different from the enemy that are fighting you is you obeying God. The difference between you and that force you are saying, Father, fight them for me, is your obedience. Nothing more. Saying, when your obedience is fulfilled, when you have obeyed me, you would have gingered me, empowered me, so to say, to fight your enemy for you. Obedience is a weapon put in God's hand to fight. Do you want God to fight for you? Put the weapon of obedience in his hand. Do you want God to favor you? Assess him through obedience. You will get him. Brethren, God could promise you anything. God can promise sinner anything, yes? God can promise a nation anything. Even though the person is a prostitute, is an armed robber, God is ready to promise him or her anything. But it takes only the obedient one to assess that promise. For you, to accept the promise of God, you must be an obedient child. You can be, you can be disobeying Him, but if you say, I, "I would have blessed you, I will bless you, I will do this," but for you to assess that blessing, to assess that promise, I am talking about God now. Satan can do anything for you. You can be disobedient, and Satan will bless you with anything. But I tell you something. You, you will pay back with your soul. So as I said, God can promise anyone anything. Don't be carried away when God is showing you revelation of how to, your tomorrow will be, even when you are sleeping with somebody else's wife. Mm -hmm. Don't be carried away that God is telling me what he will do for me. And you know you are living the sin. You will wait until eternity. You will not assess it. Why? Because the Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter number 7, Matthew chapter 7, verse 6, Matthew 7, verse 6, it says, Give not that which is holy to the dog. Give not that which is holy Unto the dog, every promises of God, every blessing of God is holy. Who is a dog? A disobedient child. Who is a dog? Somebody who is living in sin. Neither cast your purse before a swine. Before swine. Lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. This is the life of a rebellious person. This is the life of somebody who is disobedient. No matter what you do for him, since that spirit of disobedience is there, he will always go back again and make mock of God, giving Satan occasion to mock him. So therefore, no matter what God has promised you, for you to be able to assess it, you must be an obedient child of God. The unfailing weapon in the hand of a child of God. So, obedient. Now, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1, 18 to 20, Isaiah 1, 18 to 20, it says, Isaiah chapter 1, 18 to 20, let me make sure that it is the way it is. 1, 80 to 20. He said, Come now and let us reason together. Come now and let us reason together. 
This is what God is telling me and you. It's ready to reason with you. Say the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like scripture, they shall be as wool. How would this be when you obey him and come? He said, come. If you obey and come, he will do this for you. But if you vehemently disobey, you refuse to come. This will not be done. The Bible says in verse 19, if ye be willing, if ye be willing to come and obedient to the instruction of come afterward, when you come, reason with him, he will tell you things you will do that will make you to assess his treasure of blessing. If you be willing and obedient, some people are willing to go to evangelism, but they will not go. The blessing of the that God will not come for you. So people are willing to pray, but they will not do it. Willingness minus obedience will not work. It's a failure. If you be willing to preach, and you preach it, you will be blessed. So people are willing to have, to have connected. But they are not connected. They are not hearing what you are hearing right now. If you be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. The power of obedience. Obedience is a defense against an enemy. It's a propeller that will lead people to God's blessing. Verse 20. But if ye refuse and rebel, meaning if you disobey, Ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Then I ask you, you that is, say you have been blessed in your disobedience. Things that were said just now, some men of God are doing it, living in fornication, living in adultery living in whatever, and yet you see they are having conglomerate. Everything is working well. Is that from God? No. Satan can bring wealth. Satan can make one rich. If you think I am joking, ask people who say they sold their soul to the devil and see how wealthy they are. So therefore, don't be carried away when things are going well with you and you are disobeying God. You are on your way to eternal damnation. I'm talking about the blessing that comes from God. That make it rich and add no sorrow. The blessing you will enjoy on earth here. You will be a possessor of earth. And a possessor of heaven. That is the blessing I'm talking about. Willing and obedient. Brethren, God told Abraham what to do to assess his promises. God promised Abraham, I will make you father of all nations. I will bless you richly. The land I will give to you. But when the time of fulfillment came, the Lord told Abraham his access to assess the blessing. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. Genesis 17, verse 1. And when Abraham was 99, was 90 years old and 9. 90 years old and 9. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Lord God and the Lord Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Remember, there is no perfection without obedience. How will you say you are holy when you are disobedient? It's not possible. What God is saying, follow me in obedience. What brings holiness is you doing what God asks you to do. What brings perfection is you carry out the instruction of God to the letter. You perfectly obey what God says you do. 
now brought or bring about perfection. Walk with me and be ye perfect. Be ye obedient too. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. And we multiply thee exceedingly. This is the prerequisite of becoming what I want to be. Walk with me and be ye perfect. Remember the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 48. If you want to be like God, if you want God to work with you and work with God, you must become like that God. He said, be ye perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect, meaning for you to enter God's kingdom. You must not become like God. Everybody in heaven, they are as holy as God. For me and you to enter his kingdom, we must be called like him. Be ye perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. That is the prerequisite of accessing God's kingdom. Brethren, David was a man after God's heart. Why? Because he was a man that obeys God. You cannot be after God's heart when you are rebelling against him. It's not possible. The only time in Second or First uh, Samuel, chapter eleven, there about that he disobeyed God. The Bible said, David, why have you done this? You have given my enemy occasion to mock me. You are a child after my heart. Why have you done this? We're going to read it because we have a lot to discuss tonight. Why? Because you know he's a child that always obey him. Now, the Bible says in Psalms chapter 119, verse 30, Psalm 119, verse 30, I have chosen obedience is not a gift to don't say God give me the gift of obedience. No, it's what you decide to do. When you decide it, God will empower you. There is nowhere in the Bible God say, I will give you the gift of obedience. No, 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 no. It's an individualistic proposition. He said, Bible said, and Daniel proposed in his heart that he would obey God. And God empowered him. Now, I have chosen the way of truth. That judgment have I laid before me. Your judgment, your instruction, no one says. I have, I have put your instruction in me. Why? So that I will not sin against you. Why? So that the Lord can be making boast of him. No one said, This is my child in whom I were pleased to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We'll get there very soon where I. He said so. Now, as I said before, David was not just obedient, obedient child of God. He was not just obedient child of God, but a prompt one at that. A prompt obedient child of God at that. Before God is saying it, he's already doing it. Not where you will push and push and push for it is done. No. That is also a rebellion. God will use everything to will God be bribing you now? Who is that father that will be happy? Before a son or a daughter will go and give you water, you have to promise him many things. You know, if you give me water, you know, I will buy a car for you. I'll be, okay, daddy, I'll go now. Mm-mm. That is not obedient. That is what God compelling obedient. But David was not so. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 119, verse 60, say, I made haste. I made haste and delayed not to keep that commandment. This is what God is looking for. 
for you to have that weapon of mass destruction against the forces of darkness, you must be a brought obedient child of God. For you to have that weapon that is not carnal, is able to fight the enemy, you must be somebody who is prompt in obeying God. While the world is still in the mouth of God, you are already doing it. When before the father say, My son, so so so, give me what he already understands, it's already going. The water will land while it's on the way. That is what God is talking about. People like that, you don't dare them. God himself fight their battle. When it comes to the issue of those people, God sent no angel. He comes himself to fight. You know why? Because these are people who are men and women after God's heart. You don't press them to do it. They are people who made themselves to hasten and delay not in keeping the commandment of God. Brethren, you and I cannot be a master of ourselves and expect God or the Holy Spirit to work in us and through us. It's not possible. If the Holy Spirit is working in you and through you, you are obedient. You are only to, to be dumped when the time comes. Those are the people, my brother will say, you will have, you will see a negative surprise on that day. Is God using you? You are cast that demon. No one says in Matthew chapter 7, 21 to 23. Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Say, on that day, say, not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth, he that obey the voice of the Lord, he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. What is his will? To obey him. To obey the word of God. Verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied hmm, in thy name in rebellion? You are coming from somebody else's wife's house. You are, you are prophesying. You okay, went to go wait, defraud people of their money with false prophecies. You are saying you are doing the work of God. Help be to you. This is where your name is written. He says, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name don't many wonders? Wonderful works? Yeah, they are wonderful works. They brought people to their kingdom. I'm not saying you did not do them. But in what heart did you do it? In what garment were you doing it? In verse 23. And then will I profess unto them. I never knew you. Wow. What a statement. What a surprise. You never knew him? After all he did in your name? After all he was going to, from church to church singing? You don't know him? He was using your name. I never knew thee. Yea. He said, depart from me. You that walk in iniquity. Everything you were doing was in iniquity. All you were doing was for your own aggrandizement. You were only advertising it yourself. Though the spirit was moving. No, thank you, Jesus. No wonder he told them. In Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. When they came, Judah was among them. I think so. I believe so. Luke 19. From verse, sorry, Luke 9, Luke 10, Luke 10, from verse 17. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Luke 10, from verse 17. It says, 
And the seventy return again with joy. With joy. Why are they joyful? Saying, Lord, even the devil are subject unto us through thy name. They were not saying how they preach about him, which I'm not, that is not the issue now. Lord, you see how we, 20 people were delivered today. How? 4,000 gave their life to God through preaching. That was not the testimony. Their joy was the devil is subject to them. Maybe your joy yesterday was that you had a very good dream. Your joy was that ah, you lay how the person was well. Is that your joy? Your joy was that you sang very well. You preached very well. Oh, this can bring joy. No problem about it. You are an eloquent preacher. His joy is joyful. You have a very good sound returning memory. You quote the Bible or everything in your thought. Wonderful. But see what the master which we are working for is saying here. Verse 18. And he said unto them, I behold Satan as like me fell from heaven. Very good. That's why we can say, demon will bind you now. They go down. 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpent and scorpion, and over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Run with this revelation and be joyful and be happy. With that sober reflection, verse 20, this is the book of contention. Notwithstanding, this is fearful. Pause at this place, this junction, and ponder. You want that David says, sailor, pause and ponder. Notwithstanding, with all this that I have given to you, in this, rejoice not. Can you see? What was giving them joy? God said, don't rejoice over that. You cast out demon, do not eat. Anybody can do it. Anybody can do whatever you think you are doing. But not everybody can enter my kingdom. Only those who obey. Rejoice not that the spirit are subject unto you. Now you are in your body, they are subject after death. Oh, when you are not spirit, you are not spirit, then you shall see. It's scary. You are in your body now. They are subject to you. You are saying, I bind you, I lose you, I do this. A time is not coming when you shall also become spirit like that. Then we we'll know who is who. That is the fear I have. Say, God, help me to make sure my hands are clean, my heart is pure. Make my heart like a baby to make sure I always obey you at all times. But rather rejoice because your name are written in heaven. How can your name be written there when you are a disobedient child of God? It's not possible. At this time, they were still in obedience until John chapter 6, verse 6 or thereabout. From that time, they disobeyed. They stopped working with him. And from that time, their name was chased away. For the book of life. Brethren, the Lord is telling me and you, for you and I to have power over Satan here on earth and escape his wrath on that day, we must be obedient children of God. Now, the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel chapter 18. Let me start from verse 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Even if your name was in the book of life yesterday, you see today. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither the father 
bear the iniquity of the son. The righteous or the righteousness. Why did the Holy Spirit drop this one in my spirit? For you to know if your name was there yesterday and today is no more there, there's a problem. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. 21. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he has committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Power of obedience. 22. All his, on all his transgression that he had committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him in his righteousness that he had done, he shall live. 23. He have any pleasure, have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, said the Lord God, and know that he should return from his ways and live. 24. But, scary, but when the righteous lead that his name was in the book of life yesterday, Luke 10, 21, John 6, 66. Now, but when the righteous turned away from the, his righteousness and committed iniquity and do it according to all the abominations, that the wicked man do it. Shall he live? Shall he live? All his righteousness that he had done shall not be mentioned is scary in his trespass that he had trespassed and in his sin that he has sinned in them shall he die. Scary. If your name is in the book of life today, because you have done well, if you turn again tomorrow to iniquity, the name is of the book of life. Now, as I was saying, you and I cannot be masters of our own and expect God and the Holy Spirit to work in me and through me, unless you are a worker of iniquity to be dumped on the last day. And I believe that's not why we are gathered here in this ministry. John 8, 28 to 31. John 8, 28 to 31. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, Jesus Christ, who was God himself, why it was saying, I do nothing of myself, but you are your own master. You want God to work on me on the last day. Hmm. But as my father has taught me, I speak these things. As my father has taught me, meaning he is obedient child of the father. Verse 29. And he that sent me is with me. Do you know what you know? Or do you want God to be with you? Remember, you can't bribe him. There's nothing you can use to bribe him. Only obedience propel him. And he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. For I do always. For I do always those things that please him. Meaning I obey him all the time. Emma, well, go here. Okay, Father, I go. Come. Okay, Father, I come. Not that, mm, oh, Father, you said you go. I will not. Mm, 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 mm. Until you become like a remote in his hand. Heaven is far away. I do those things that please him. 30. As he speak this word. Many believe on him, just as you believe, but wait and see. 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, If you continue not seizing and obedient, 
Who is that person who will give himself up for a friend who is still not in love? It's not done. If you are not trustworthy, I will not give you myself. You are jumping up and down. It cannot, it cannot work. God is looking for men of God who are stable with him. Just as me and you, we are looking for a companion, a friend who is stable with us. Who is that husband who will be happy today? Not that something happened to pack load. Maybe because your father that is rich. You marry a poor man. You pack your load and go away. After a while, you come back again. You pack your load. You, the, woman, the man will be weary of you. Verse, verse, uh, the same thing with our God. He needs a stable relationship. Stable, obedient children of his. Then said Jesus to them, to those Jews which believe on him, if you continue in my word, if you keep obeying me, then are ye my disciples indeed. If you keep on with me in love, then are you my friend indeed. I can boldly say that this person is my friend. That sister is my friend indeed. That person is my so indeed. When the relationship is stable, when no one is galloping, brethren, that's why he said in that uh, John 15, verse 40, 50, or thereabout, 40, 15, if you love me, not by mount, if you love me, not by jumping up and down, if you love me, not by shouting with bad prayer, if you love me, in verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandment. If you love me, obey my word. Do them. Um, I will tell my father of the truth. Emmanuel loves me. Brethren, do you want to be free from Satan's accusation? Humiliation? And intimidation? Do we want to be free from Satan's accusation? Let me tell you something. When Satan accuses you before God, just be crying. Satan can never tell God what you are not doing. He could not accuse Job for anything. Because there was nothing. The Bible says he accused with hold. Joshua, the high priest, he accused him. And it was true. If not for the special grace of God, that delivered that young man, he would have been doomed forever. So, when you are before God and Satan come and accuse you, just know it's true. Satan dare not lie before God. That's why we must set ourselves all the time. Now, I ask myself again, I'm asking you, do you and I want to be free from Satan's accusation, humiliation, and intimidation? We must be obedient to God. There's nothing that frustrates Satan more than obedient. You can fast for 100 days, dry fasting. If you are disobedient, you are wasting time. All the Bible can be on your head. Be quoting them in your sin. Satan will not, he will not respect you. But pray for 10 minutes and you are obedient child of God. I tell you the truth. What somebody who fasted for 100 days dry fasting cannot do, we do it. Power of obedience. John 14, 30 to 31. John 14, I start from 29 because of clarity. John 14, 29 to 31. And now I have told you before, it come to pass, that when it come, to pass, ye my belief. 30, 30. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you. For the peace of this of this world, comet and had nothing 
E me. Oh, I love this. It's coming. But there's no accusation. No wonder the Bible says in that John chapter uh, John 19. Different people were coming to accuse him. Nothing. It was baseless. That's why they say a word that says free or clear conscience, fear no accusation. They say, they say you will just be bubbling. Just be rejoicing. Oh God, thank you. They are even helping me to carry my name. When they tell them, they tell them, let us go and check if it's true. When they come, they see something else. They join. That's why I'm saying, everyone talking about this ministry, please, keep on doing it. Tell the Apostle Emmanuel is a killer. Apostle Emmanuel is scattering marriage. But when they now come, see the man, see the message, what would they do? They have no choice than to follow God that we are serving. Keep on advertising it. God will help you. Now, do you and I want to be free? Let's see that come and see nothing in you. Come, scan you. You know gossiping. Scan you. No hatred in your heart. Scan you. No backstabbing. Scan you. You don't want to, you are not there to take somebody else on. You manage what you have. I tell you, Satan will be frustrated. I tell you, even in this ministry, in the life of some people, Satan is frustrated. You know why? Because you have nothing to use against them. Because they are careful in everything they are doing. They are living a sober reflection life. God will help us all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 31. But that the world may know that I love the Father. How did Christ prove the love for the Father? And as the Father gave me commandment, even so, I do. If Christ have missed one, I tell you, Satan would have accused him. And the Father gave me commandment, I do. Arise, let us go and leave these accusers. You have nothing in me. If that is life you are living, I tell you the truth. No matter what the devil try to do, forget about him. Keep on mind your business. Keep on doing it. You will just be revolving around and you cannot get you. Why? Because the edge of protection through obedience is around you. Because your obedience is fulfilled, God will be helping you to fight everyone that are disobeying in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Brethren, time is fast spent. But notwithstanding, people today are running hater skater, jumping up and down. Look for a prophet who tell them what is not there. People are running from pillar to post to avoid death. They don't want to die. But are rebelling against God. The one that have power over death. We are not obeying God. Hey, man of God, man of God, pray for me, they are killing me. You have three wives, I hope. Man of God, pray for me. The man you are living with is not your husband. Man of God, pray for me. Hey, hey. You are a witch. You are a wizard. Man of God, pray for me. You are a thief. And the man of God will say, Need that lay hand on you so that break coconut on your head. So that even pour kerosene on you. If you're not going the way you're born, so it's business. Sometimes they give you all sorts of things to drink because that is what you are looking for. Some they perform magic on your head and go. But in all of this, you are adding more problem to problem. The Bible says in John 8 51, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my commandment, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. You don't need to be afraid when your hands are clean. Who is he that will harm you when you are a, somebody who is doing the right thing? 
Let them see that ah, in your dream they were burying you. Wake up and uh, uh, eat your food. You can uh, drink it. It cannot happen. You know why? The Lord is with you. Let them say they are planning evil against you. You know, say they will surely gather. Not by him. Anyone that gather against the righteous shall scatter for their sake. We scatter them. Why? Because you are a pleaser of God. Ephesians chapter 6, 1 to 3. I will stop here because time I have not a lot to say, but let me stop here because time. Children, obey. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Someone might say, ah, are we on children fasting and prayer? No, we are not. This is the word of the Lord. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Two, honor thy father and thy mother. Why is God saying all this? Because you know the power of obedience. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with, with promise. Three, that it may be well with you. If you obey your earthly father, your biological parents, and it shall be well with you. Imagine how it will be when you obey God Almighty. If obey parents can follow this great magnitude of blessing, and it be well with thee, and thou may live long on the earth, just obeying your earthly father, all this follow. Imagine, think about it, what it will be if you are an obedient child of God. The earth is yours. You will live long on earth here and in heaven eternal life with God. Obedient is powerful. In that office you are, do you want your, how do you call them, your manager or whatever, to love you. I'm not saying obey wrongly. I'm not saying you say an R2 to to make it five to make it twenty thousand to defraud. No, be obedient. Do the work as you are told. I tell the truth. That man will fall in love with you. Except you are somebody that family is fighting. They have household enemy fighting you. If that is the case, God is able to deliver you. If you are obedient child of God, but with that, all those spiritual forces coming from the lineage which God is able to destroy if you are obedient child of God. Obey your, your director, obey your supervisor, and see how he will love you. Do what the Lord says. Because thou loveth righteousness and hated iniquity. Because thou loveth righteousness and hated wickedness, God, thy God, have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. Hebrews 1 verse 9. Or 1 verse 19. 1 verse 9. God, thy God, has anointed thee above that fellow. Do you want that man to love you above others? In your workplace, obey. Do you want your husband to love you so much? Be obedient wife. Do you want your wife to love you? Man, you can also be obedient man. Obedient husband. Love him. Love your husband. Love your wife. According to the scripture, marriage is settled. Hebrews 1, 9. Thou loveth righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, evil thy God, has anointed thee with the all year of gladness above thy colleague or above thy fellow. It can't be this ministry. Do you want God to put you in a pay center level? Obey him. Do you want to be above everyone that are in that group with you? Obey God. And see how God 
they take your name far. When the angels are there, can you see my daughter in whom I were pleased? Can you see my son among all the, the, all, all the watchmen over here? I love him more than all. You know why? Because he loved me too. Obey me more than all. I want us to pray say, Father, I've heard you. I don't know if you have heard, though, if you have heard. Lord, I've heard you. You have told me what obedience can do. Maybe we will me next time. We'll see the merit and the merit of obedience. Lord, wherever I be disobeying you, I'm thinking I will be rewarded with the reward of those who are obeying you. I repent today. I know now that the wages of disobedience is death. Show me mercy. Forgive me as I repent from all my disobedience today. In the name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and pray. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, Lord, I beg for your mercy, Father, Father, Jesus, Father, 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 Forgive me, and then show me mercy, O God. Have mercy, have mercy, forgive us, O God. Show us mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus Christ, they will pray. Amen. We are going to pray. It's not a gift to obedience. It's not a gift. If I give me the gift of obedience, no, 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 no. It's you will make up your mind. As we read before about Brother David in Psalm 11960, I made haste. I made haste and delayed not to keep the commandment. Psalm 11930, I have chosen the way of truth. I have made myself. I want to pray. Please set your heart. If truly you have made up your mind, say, Father, today I have decided to be obedient child of yours. I have decided to live in obedience all the days of my life henceforth. Holy Spirit, help me. Empower me in this my decision. In the name of Jesus Christ, open my heart pray. in Jesus Christ, may we pray. Lastly, we're going to pray. Two things are involved. So come and let us raise it together. Said Lord, Though your sin is as dirty, let me paraphrase, please. I will purge you. And if it's not, I say, if thou be willing, number one, willingness and obedience. You can't be willing yet to don't obey. This message have come now. I have many people. I said, oh wow, this is wonderful. Hey, this message, they are willing now. But will they do it? We need to pray, but you will not need that to pray. You will not do it. God has no pleasure in your willingness to have no corresponding obedience. Lord, today, the grace to always be willing to carry out your instruction. And the, 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 the equivalent grace to obey to do it 
to, for me to be willing and carry it out. Give me that grace today of willingness and obedience. In the name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and pray. Father, I in Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Sorry, let's pray this prayer. Very, very important. We heard just now how an hedge was put around you. Why? Because you were a perfect, holy, and righteous man. And all this cannot be done when you are disobeying God. Most of us, our heads are broken. The enemy come as they like. Buffeting us. Why? Because we were living in disobedience. Let me pray. Say, Father, every head you built around us when we knew you, when we first knew you. I tell you this, sister. When you come to God, the first thing he does is to quickly put a head around you. So tell the enemy, this one is my owner. This one said, as many that my father gives to me, they can never, none of them can be taken from me. You put a hedge around you until you walk away, the hedge will be broken. Father, every hedge you put around me, when I came to you, that are now broken as a result of my ups and downs, as a result of my today, tomorrow, I'm here, tomorrow, I'm there. Father, please, and now the serpent are biting us from all angles. Check your life now and see. What I say is true. See that and check your life. Are they that are not happening before? Are they not happening now? They are happening now. Why? Because of those little, little, little disobedience. Father, now that I have decided to obey you now promptly, all the hedge around me that were broken, Father, please show me mercy. Rebuild them again. Hedge and run again. And let all the serpents that were released to be biting me be returned back to where they were before. In the name of Jesus Christ, open my prayer. Father, Father, please review the hedge again. Review the hedge around my marriage, oh God. Review the hedge around my wife and children. Review the hedge around this ministry. Review the hedge around all the laborers, every source of this mountain. Review the hedge around our families, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, let all the serpents be chased away. All those serpents, all those scorpions, all those demons that were perfecting us, chase them away. Chase them away. Chase them away from us, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, the Spirit. In Jesus Christ, mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And as we have prayed by the grace and mercy of God, so shall it be from now on. As the enemy will be accusing you, accusing us, the Lord will always be there to defend me and you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As many have ever accused us wrongly, the Lord will touch them and bring them so that we all will serve God together and we all and our accusers we all enter heaven together on the last day in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amen. Are you out there? You're not born again. The hour has come. Please give your life to Jesus Christ. That's where the first obedience starts from. We are open, we are, we are able to get that, the rest will be easy for you. Confess your sin before him. 
give him the opportunity to be your Lord and better Savior. If I have done that, I, Emmanuel, rejoice with you. I have rejoice with you on every source of this mountain. They are all rejoicing with this decision that I have made. This, I want you to still move a step further to be baptized. Call on any of the men of God in this ministry, and God will use it to baptize you, counsel you, pray with you where necessary. Let us pray. Daddy, I thank you. I bless you. I worship you for your opportunity again. Lord, you have, come to, you have poured out your heart before us, O God. That, this is where holiness is centered on. There is no holiness outside obedience. There is no righteousness outside obedience. There is no perfection outside obedience. When we are able to obey, holiness and righteousness is possible. Lord, we ask for the grace of God. As almost all of us who have made up our mind now, after hearing you, to start living in obedience to your word, empower us, strengthen us. That spirit that always comes to steal your word away from us, dragging us again back to our vomit, make us to become like, like as if we are pigs and dogs. Let that spirit be consumed today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I said, daughter, that let the open prayer today or the intro prayer say, the message we hear to will run with it. Father, we are running with this message of God to live to your glory alone. Father, have I spoken out of context? Have mercy upon me. Forgive me. Is there anything I have said or done that, that, that does not glorify you? Father, I pray for mercy. Forgive me and perfect me today. Help me to go and be the, be the doer of this world, oh God, that the devil we have nothing to use against me on the last day. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, I have prayed with us, given. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.